For some, this might be familiar, and for others, unfamiliar. I'm Joshua Weissman, and today we're gonna to be making fast food hash browns. So when you go to a fast food restaurant, you're thinking like a million ingredients for one basic thing. These hash browns are three. You got salt, you got potatoes, regular russet, okay? I don't want any fancy dancy Idaho, well this is actually probably from Idaho, but you get the point. Russet potatoes and duck fat, that is it. Three ingredients and you can make your own McDonald's hash browns. So let's begin. Anytime I'm peeling potatoes or I'm peeling like a lot of vegetables, I get a little bit of parchment paper. Oh God, that was not a good tear. It's fine, it's fine, we'll roll with it. So a little parchment trick I like to use, you peel over the parchment paper. Okay, so this is gonna catch all your peelings, all the dusty bits that come off. I know some people are like, oh, I want an artisanal. I wanna leave some skin. No, not today, all right? The artisanal is going out the window. We're making McDonald's hash browns, please. I got into cooking really, really young. Uh, I started doing professional work cooking when I was like 14, but prior to that, my mom was the the lead on the kitchen, so to speak, and she brought me in the kitchen and I knew right away that when I started cooking, that was my thing. And ever since then, and that was like maybe when I was three, ever since then I've been doing it consistently. That's the beauty of sticking to something that you like. So once you've peeled them all, you just wrap up your parchment and you get a nice little burrito that you're not going to eat and you're instead going to put in the trash. Or the compost, if you have it. So once you have your potatoes peeled, you're then gonna grate them on sort of the medium coarse setting. You don't want the fine one, you don't want these, this, nobody uses this anyway, let's be honest. And you don't want the fine grating. We want little nice threads. Make sure to apply a decent amount of pressure when you're doing this, otherwise you're gonna get threads that are way too thin. You want some thickness with at least five C's, at minimum. So not a lot of people know this about me, but when I was a kid, one of my favorite breakfasts going into middle school was a McDonald's hash brown, okay? Not proud to say it, but if you've ever had one, you know. You know. You wanna move relatively quickly too when you're doing this because the potatoes will oxidize and they look very yucky and we don't want that. Uh oh, they're oxidizing. We have to hurry. Ta -da! Okay, so all our potatoes are grated. Now, the problem is all this starch. We need to get rid of that. So we're gonna take this to the sink and give it a quick rinse. Okay, so the way I like to do this is fill it up with water. You can see right away how my hand just disappears. There's, it's just filled with starch. So we're washing it all off with a little rinse. It's just gonna help a lot in getting separate pieces of potato rather than it just being one giant mashed potato brick. Drain it and repeat that just until that water starts to turn clear and you'll know when you see it. You might not have... All right, I need a new one now. You might not have heard of rinsing your potatoes, but you've definitely heard of making sure that they're not wet when you fry them. Because water and oil, they just, uh, they just don't go well together. What can I say? So we're gonna dump these out on a kitchen towel. And to get rid of that excess water, wrap it up in the towel, swaddle it. It's kind of dang, oh God, oh God. See, there's a lot of water in it. And then we're just gonna wring out all that excess water. See, I don't want anyone starting a grease fire today, so please, please, make it nice and taut, and then, and then squeeze. And now you can see, we have these beautiful, sort of fluffy, nice and clean, dry potatoes. Now we're ready to fry. We're not gonna go straight to forming them or adding any sort of binders. Instead, we're gonna confit them, which basically means to slowly cook them in fat, more specifically, preserve them in fat. So, we've got, Two things, big heavy bottom pot and a whole lot of animal fat. Not olive oil, not canola oil, not vegetable oil, okay? None of that liquid stuff. I want animal fat, either duck fat or pork fat. And the reason why is because the fat is gonna help it bind together. We're not using any starches to bind this. We're using fat to bind the potato, which you know is gonna be good. This is about three quarts of duck fat. So add in our potatoes and just kind of mix that together and make sure every piece of potato is completely coated in fat. Fun fact, most fast food restaurants used to use animal fat all the time actually. If anything, we're just going back to, back to the roots. Okay, so once that's mixed, it looks kind of like um, coconut butter with like coconut shreds in it. Boy, wouldn't that suck if you thought this was like a mounds filling, but it's just like 
pork fat and duck fat and raw potato. Oh, come, I made some homemade mounds for you. Ugh. I may have a beautiful stove behind me, but for some reason I'm gonna choose to cook on induction so that we don't have to change perspective. We've got our fat potatoes. I'm gonna set that over medium heat and just wait. We're not gonna immediately fry it. They're gonna slowly come up. They're gonna absorb that oil. They're gonna cook nice and slow and even. And more specifically, they're gonna get confit. One of the reasons why this is my favorite recipe is I feel like it really embodies the beauty of my whole series, But Better, and that's kind of how I got started doing YouTube and everything. But Better was, for me, a format that I really enjoyed because I can look at all these companies and all these big sort of goliaths in the food industry, in fast food specifically, where it's like, oh my gosh, you could never make that. How could you possibly make, you know, insert X fast food item that's so, you know, coveted and almost cultish in a way and being able to sit back and use traditional cooking techniques that I've learned professionally in restaurants and on my own to make them better than a company that's you know had like millions of dollars in time to perfect it uh, well obviously feels great for the ego but more specifically this is a perfect example three ingredients and we still we still came on top because of technique because of care and love of cuisine you can see that the potatoes are sort of already sort of turning translucent and, and really absorbing that duck fat, which by the way, if you don't know the beauty of duck fat and potatoes, you have not lived. You've been experiencing life here, but now that I've told you that, now you can experience life like, if I had a ladder, I would climb to the top of the ladder and be like, here. Now you gotta be really careful here. You don't wanna overcook your potato because if you do, you're gonna end up with, well, it's just gonna be mashed potatoes at that point confit mashed potatoes, but it's not right. And every so often, I'm just gonna give it a little stir. Scrape the bottom, give it a little stir, otherwise it's gonna stick and get crispy on the bottom, which sounds good, but we're not crisping it yet, we're just confiting them. How many times have I said that? We need to do a confit counter. Confit number 10. Basically, there's no set time to cooking this. Rather, we're gonna cook it exactly to 215 degrees. That is the number, don't ask why, okay? It's Josh's magic formula. The real reason is because once you hit 215, that's about the point where the potatoes are perfectly cooked. You go too far, they're overcooked. You go too low, they're undercooked. That's how it works. So we're almost at 215. Now this is the bowl that we had the duck fat in. Okay, so there's a little bit of duck fat residue. It's fine. This is a chinois. Everybody should have one of these. I'm tired of people being like, oh, Josh called for a strainer? and then they pull this out. There's nothing wrong with this, it's just like if you wanna, just be, just be serious. Just be serious, okay? Okay, we're about at 215. Immediately turn off the heat. Gloves, always. Safety first, brother. Before I pour this and everyone in the comments is like, Josh can't pour. Okay, look, this thing just pours really bad, all right? This was not designed to pour. Here we go. So through the strainer, into the pot. Ah, it's fine. It's fine. All right and be careful not to get any of those potatoes into the oil, we really wanna separate them. Yeah, I'm trying to pour towards the camera, okay? Okay, so we got our potatoes, we got our hot oil below, so try to be careful with that. Let gravity do its magic. Maybe help gravity out a little bit. Sometimes gravity's a little slow, all right? It's fine. <laughs> I, I can only see when you zoom, and I, I already know what it looks like on camera, it's so funny. Okay, so these feel pretty good, and then immediately we're gonna dump them out on this cookie sheet, whatever you wanna call it, now they're really hot, so you wanna spread them out as gently as possible for two reasons. For one, it makes seasoning easier without breaking it, and it cools them down much, much faster. They're not in one big clump just heating all over each other. We've got our salt, and you're gonna season these pretty generously. I'm tired of seeing under-seasoned potatoes, all right? Everybody usually, they're like, oh, that's good. No, potatoes can take a lot of salt. Now I'm gonna give these a little toss. I like to use the spatula here so I don't break them up and I'll go under them and fold them over. Under and over, under and over. We really just wanna mix them as gently and uninvasively as possible. Is that a term? Is that a medical term? Uninvasive. People who've had surgery, let us know in the comments below, huh? Is it non-invasive or is it uninvasive? <laughs> I sound so stupid right now. Just cook the damn food. <laughs> okay, it's folded over. Oh, and I, I didn't need that anyway. And then again, we're gonna do that sort of like flicking motion. We're gonna spread it back out. A little more salt. I'm gonna give them another little turn and then they're mixed. You know, when I'm deciding 
to do any sort of a new recipe or what kind of a video am I doing or what recipes am I working on. Honestly, it, it depends on a couple different things. For one, if there's some sort of interesting thing that's coming out or seasonally, maybe there's like a, you know, when, tr when truffle season comes around, I, I don't care what anyone says. I'm using truffles, all right? They're special, special to me. When I crave something, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna put it up on the channel. I'm gonna talk about it because I feel like, I, I don't know, I feel like I have this universal hindsight of like, I feel like this is the time that people want this. And so, I make it. Once these are spread, we just need to let these cool until you, know, you can touch them. Once they're handleable, we'll then mold them. All right, so we have our potatoes. They're nice and cool. They're still a touch warm, but they're not blazing hot. Another thing that every home cook should have is a half baking sheet. We all know the rimmed baking sheet, but what about a half one? You never know, right? Okay, so get yourself some wax paper. We're gonna get our spoon, grab a little mound of your potatoes, place it in the upper left. Now from here, we're literally just going to press it in that classic hash brown shaped puck. So press it down, pat it out. Don't press too hard, but you do want it to sort of like stick together. Because again, what we're relying on is the fat to congeal and solidify this. Really try to keep those potato threads intact as well. We're forming it, but we also want that shredded potato texture. These are gonna make roughly four to eight good hash browns. Now, if you want them really chunky, these are pretty chunky, then it'll make four. Who doesn't like it a little chunky, you know? Okay, so we have our rough shape here. You're then gonna take a back of a spoon or an offset spatula and just tighten up those edges. So this is completely optional, but we've already spent this much time on it, we might as well make them look beautiful. We've got these little pucks. We've all seen this shape, right? This is the classic fast food hash brown shape. So you need plastic wrap. Just gonna wrap it up nicely. Make sure no air can get in there. And then we're just gonna take these and we're gonna refrigerate them overnight or until they're completely solid. So at least four hours. Make them the day before, it's easy. It is the next day. We've got our potatoes. They sat overnight, they're ready to fry. And this oil is at about 375 Fahrenheit. Find your favorite, get underneath it with a spatula or an offset spatula. Just carefully drop it in. Once you drop this, blast this on high, high, high heat. So it maintains that temperature. If the temp goes down, you're not gonna get that crust. It makes a whole lot of sense. All right, I'm pulling this out. And look at that, we got a nice little Potato man, drop it onto a wire rack carefully. Right away, while they're still hot, season them with a little bit of salt. Now, you're frying these essentially based off looks. You're waiting for the interior to soften up and then the exterior to be perfectly crispy, perfectly brown, and not flexible, but crunchy. Double check your temps, bring it back up, and then drop in your next potato. I like to clean my oil out because little bits and pieces come off. You know, you want that oil to stay as nice as possible for as long as possible. One other note that I would suggest is you don't really want to drop in more than about one at a time. If you drop in too many, then the oil temperature will drop too quickly and it won't form that crust that you want. Okay, so we did it. We have our final hash wand. Let's quickly get a little sound bite, if you will. So we're gonna just get this, on. this guy on over here. Oh, listen carefully. I'm sensing some crunch. This is just as I remember it. It's crunchy on the outside. You can see this sort of like lacy, wispy, ultra airy, crispy crust. The inside's comfy. You can taste the duck fat, perfectly cooked potato. We'll do the ketchup, all right, for the internet. It's perfect. The recipe you can get in the link in the description. You can follow me on my YouTube channel, Joshua Weissman. Guys, it was a ton of fun. I appreciate you having me. And uh, last of all, one little secret. I have a cookbook coming very soon. I can't tell you what it is. I can't tell you where it is, but it's coming. So keep your eyes peeled. This is my ideal fancy hash brown. First, creme fraiche in little dollops. Then add little dollops of caviar, assuming you have it. Add a nice sprinkle of fresh chives, black pepper, and that is your fancy hash brown.